It is McLeet Hedero on KRCB Live. I'm Amy Contardi from Tuesday Night Crossing Borders on KRCB. McLeet Hedero, warm welcome, and thank you so much for some absolutely fantastic music this afternoon. Thanks so much for having yeah. us. Yeah. McLeet, you are based in San Francisco, born in Ethiopia, and apparently living all over the globe. Can you talk a little bit about your, your roots and what brought you to the United States? Um, let's see. I, I guess, well, my roots are in Ethiopia. I was born in Addis Ababa, um, and I left when I was about a year and a half. And we went to Germany and then uh, to D.C. and Iowa, and I really grew up all over. And and because of that, I kind of think of myself and always have thought of myself as, as being this person of multiples, you know, comfortable and um, in between cultures, immersed in different cultures. And, um, and that's because that's the life I've had, that's the music that I make too. I think of my music as sitting somewhat at the crossroads of about three different influences, in this particular project anyway. Um, I really bring in uh, the tradition of North American songwriters. And I use North American specifically because um, some Canadian songwriters are some of my favorites, like Leonard Cohen and things like that. Um, and then uh, jazz. Um, I have been a huge, huge jazz fan for years and years um, and really find the improvisation that's at the heart of that music to be just absolutely essential um, in the sound that I make and so I play with jazz musicians as well and then I bring in some influences from Ethiopia. Improv improvisational sums up some of the music that you played today. Was it indeed improvisational? Some of the dance moves, the rhythms, the way the instruments came together, separated, came together again. Can you talk a little bit about today's performance and how the instrumentation comes together? Well, um, the way improvisation works is that you leave space for it and you also give guidelines. Um, so there are places where we, the musicians and I will say, okay, we, we have an understanding that there's a certain amount of bars of improvisation. And then other times I'm just letting them go and I'll take my cues from them. Other times they're taking their cues from me as we've been on the road a lot over the past year and a half and really playing a lot over the past even six months, um, we've become even more improvisational because our communication is just very, very tight. Mm -hmm. So I can flash my eyes this way and, and the section will double. I can flash my eyes this way and it'll cut in half. And that's just mm -hmm. so exciting because um, it makes the music different every time we play it. And of course, when you're on the road playing show after show after show, you really need to be able to stay um, true to the spirit of the songs. And I think the best way to do that is actually through um, improvisation and leaving space for that. Can you share a little bit with us what your rehearsal sessions are like? Um, lately, our <laughs> <laughs> lately our rehearsal sessions happen in sound checks um, because uh, this band, which is um, Darren Johnston on the trumpet, Evan Flory Barnes on the upright bass, and Daryl Green on the drum kit, this is my touring band. So we've been touring together for the last year and a half. Um, but Darren is actually the only person who lives in San Francisco. Uh -huh. So we're together on the road, but not together in our everyday lives. So rehearsal has been um, more like, I have a new song, let's try it out. And we'll try it in one sound check, or we'll try it when we're you know, getting ready to come to the gig and we're all driving together. You've done many projects in Ethiopia recently. Mm -hmm. Can you share that with us? Um, in 2009, in early 2009, I founded a collective of Ethiopian diaspora artists called the Arbamich Collective. And we're primarily living in, um, well, we are living in North America and Canada, everybody of, of Ethiopian origin and, and, you know, sort of differing differing uh, backgrounds in the sense of some people like myself were born there and left when very young. Others uh, left when they were teenagers and came to the States later um, or to Canada later. Um, but we're poets and photographers and filmmakers and theater artists and visual artists and musicians. And together we go to Ethiopia annually, about once every year, not necessarily every calendar year, but really about every year to connect with um, both traditional and contemporary artists in Addis Ababa, as well as in the um, other regions of the country. So the idea is really to go as learners and to really immerse ourselves in what's a very rapidly evolving um, culture sphere mm -hmm. there. Um, things are really changing. Ethiopia is undergoing huge changes. Um, and 
And it's also very different from the stories that we heard growing up. For example, mm-hmm. I, I realized at one point that, you know, my parents had stories and my aunts and uncles had stories that they would tell about the country. And at some point I realized that my own interpretations of the culture and the country were actually filtered through their experiences. And so I I wanted to be able to break through into something that was real now in the present moment and also real for me as a person who could have a continual relationship with an evolving culture. Yeah, I, personally I feel it's really important not to sort of um, staticize, you know, to make static. This is what Ethiopian culture is. It's not that. It's it's incredibly diverse, incredibly multiple and also evolving just as any culture does. So I thought we need to go as a group, as artists, as communicators in multiple mediums to go to Ethiopia to be able to learn and to be able to stay current in what is happening in culture there. The San Francisco scene of music is immense and constantly growing and evolving. How does that influence you and your band? Well, you know, I think that um, for me, it was re- San Francisco is so special to me. I've lived there for seven years, and it's the longest I've ever lived mm-hmm. anywhere. So um, that means something, you know that that really means something to me. And um, it was the place that became my sort of the it, it's the ground that that I really was able to emerge out of. And and San Francisco has been so good to me. It's been mm-hmm. so good to me, especially, you know, the Mission District art scene and, and um, the Red Poppy Art House, um, mm-hmm. which I was once upon a time the director of. But that mm-hmm. is really my creative home and um, was the place that I found most of the musicians that I play with. Mm-hmm. And so I would say that it's, it's, the, it's the center spoke in the creative wheel right now Mm -hmm. you know things maybe there are lots of wheels or maybe things change but um san francisco is very very special and important to me would you be able to define what your center spoke might be in the next two to five years I, i really feel very experimental in terms of the music that i make this is a project of my solo songs and um these musicians are my band, but at the same time, I have two other projects coming out in January simultaneously, actually, that are totally different. I'm working with an Oakland-based soul singer called Quinn DeVoe, um, who has a band called the Blue Beat Review. And Quinn and I decided to do an album of soul interpretations of indie rock songs and art rock songs. So we're really bringing the soul roots of that music to light. We're doing In Satellite of Love by Lou Reed, and uh, we have a couple of originals. I played one original from that project today. The song Slow is on um, that album. And then I just finished recording another album with two MCs, Gabriel Teodros and Burnt Face. And they're actually both in the Arba Minch Collective, and we were all in Ethiopia together in May um, with this band. And um, so Gabriel and Elias and I uh, are making a record that we call our Ethiopian hip hop space opera. <laughs> and we're really using the concepts of alien and diaspora and these vast distances of space mm-hmm. to talk about that otherness of, of culture and, and reaching across to create cultural connections across distances within ourselves and, and, and with, across cultures. And it's been really exciting. We were even able to get NASA to give us some open source star sounds wow. um, to, to, to weave into the beats. Um, mm. Uh, and actually, the the star sounds came from SETI, NAS- NASA's Search for Extraterrestrial mm-hmm. Intelligence. Mm-hmm. And in the project, Gabriel actually plays a half human, half alien coming to Earth for the first time. So it was just a you know a wonderful sort of coming together of science and and uh, and narrative. Yes, the little free time that you have, you're touring, you're traveling to Ethiopia, you're working on some projects. Share with us what you do in your free time. Oh, I'm a homebody. I like to, <laughs> you know, it's like I never get to be at home. And when I'm home, I just want to be home. Mm. <laughs> just, you know, because uh, I, I I have a really special, actually, place. It, I live in Potrero Hill in San Francisco. And, I, you know, my house has a whole western view of the city. It's just a wonderful sort of big picture view. And when I get to be there, it's mm. just a treasured time to me. So, yeah. 
Well, thank you. <clears throat> this afternoon has been an absolute treasure, and I, I thank you very much. And on behalf of everyone who listened this afternoon, thank McLeet. you so much. Thank you. Take care. Hadero on KRCB.